Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I am here at Isabella's and today we're going to glaze the pots that we made uh, a few weeks ago. So, Hi Isabella. Hi so, Nigel. What are we going to start with today? So we got the pots, they were bisque fired, which is the first firing to get them ready for glazing. And they're not yet fired to full maturity, so that means that the clay is still a little bit porous, but and it I has see. a different color. So right now it's this nice terracotta color and it's soft and I it see. also will absorb the water from the glaze so when we glaze it we'll like suck it right in which is uh, what we want because we want the glaze to stay on the pot and then we'll fire them again so yeah. first what we can do now is think like do we want to sand the feet of the pots because if they're going to be indoors or if we don't want you know like if we want to have a nice and smooth finish it's nice to to sand those sharp bits so yeah, yeah. we're just going to take sandpaper and go over those rougher areas because now it's like much more sturdy i see um to There's make it nice finishing and work eh? yeah finish and i'm going to show nigel's uh <laughs> there's my pot fired up <laughs> that's incredible like <laughs> how did you do this from a pinch pot that's not how pinch pots look like no. nigel <laughs> i don't know <laughs> It they evolved. normally look primitive. This is like super refined and <laughs> well, thank you. finished. And here's your pot you made. It looks beautiful. Oh yeah, here it is. I'll take it out to show. So I'm going to be sending it too because... Oh, um, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's going to be for a tropical tree. It's going to be indoors. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I don't scratch my no furniture. sharp edges on the feet. And yeah, that, eh? exactly. And you've got some interesting bone type yeah <laughs> sculptures that are going to get fired and glazed and mm -hmm. will that get glazed or? it i think i will glaze it with yeah. either white glaze or like very translucent glaze and here's the big pot you made for your forest yes yeah wow did that ever turn out nice that one i might put some oxides on i'm not sure yet yeah or just fire it straight like this i see for the spruce and that'll turn you. more of a tan color, will it? It's going to be like uh, almost purplish. I okay. can show the other pot that's okay. outside if you'd like to see. Cool. And do you still have the other pot I I made last time? There was. It's downstairs. Okay. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to put oxides on it oh, that'll downstairs. Be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be cool. nice. All right, so we're going to start with some sanding of the feet in the mm -hmm. pots. So you and can we'll sand the whole outside of the pot to make it you smooth could. if you yeah, want. Yeah, if you want to. Like if you're not planning on glazing, uh, you can smooth it out. If you're glazing, it, you don't have to because the glaze will be nice. It smooths smooth. it out, eh? Yeah, so you can look at the glaze options yeah. upstairs and then you can choose what you want to do. Whether you're going to keep it like this or whether you're going to put oxides. I see. Or oxides and glaze. There's lots of options. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. We're going to do the sanding outside because you don't want to breathe in the dust particles and it makes a mess of the garage. So here we go. All right, so any rough edges. This is a pretty fine paper. It's 150. Okay. Um, you could use, like, I, I'm not really paying attention much to uh, the grit and mess of it for the bonsai pots, but um, this should work. So you're just going to remove it it comes out super nice and you can see like this fine dust forms oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then like just touch it after and before and see like how different right away okay right like it's super nice and smooth so yeah, yeah. it's like sanding a wood sculpture or something isn't it mm -hmm. yeah i'm so worried my feet were gonna pop off or something mm, well they are very sturdy that's good if you apply them well using the slip and scar yeah if you follow the procedure it works it is not warm out today is it no <laughs> So if you're going to be glazing this part, like, I mean, you don't have to worry too much about right, it. Right. But um, if you see something that's, you know, like you don't like because yeah, it's, it's like a, a dent. Yeah, a bump or something. Mm -hmm. And it's sanded out. Break the edge in the hole a bit too, eh? Mm -hmm. Just to make it nice and smooth. texture. Yeah, I think that'll do. Right. 
There, it is sanded. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think, I think that'll do. Here is the pots that we're going to glaze today. So there's Isabella's pot she made. There's the one I made over here. There's the pinch pot that I made over here that I made on the video. And then there's my large pot for my Natal ficus. So I'm thinking for this one, I'm going to, this has already been fired. So we don't know how the glazes would react on a, on a pot that's already fired. So we're thinking of putting the iron oxide on it and then maybe a glaze sponging it on maybe halfway up just to break up the surface and maybe some earth tones or I don't know maybe even something contrasting would look good so this pot I think I'm going with this kind of a color sort of the dark green with the floating blue on it I think that'll look cool over here on the wall are samples of glazes applied to different colors of clay so you can see how they react with texture and really fascinating. Oh, I think this was the color I wanted to go with this green color on the rectangular pot, maybe. No, that's on the white clay, so it would be this color. Ah, so many decisions, I'll have to think about it. So we've wiped down all the pots, getting all that dust from sanding off of them. So they're all ready. We have to wax the inside and the feet so they don't get the glaze on them. So you can see the bottom. And then, yeah, then they'll be ready to glaze and you can either dip them or you can paint it on or sponge it on. So I have decided on the colors here, or we have decided on them. So on this pot, I'm just going to go with the iron oxide. I'm going to go with a heavy banding top and on the bottom and maybe fade it away in the middle, I think. Something like that, and maybe some blotching or streaking or something, just to break up that, that surface so it's not, you know, makes it a little more interesting. The uh, pot here, that's probably going to be for my bougainvillea, we're gonna go with this soft blue, which is really, really nice. And then the pinch pot over here, we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go with the the green and what we put the floating blue on it too green with the floating blue and I think oh that's gonna be fantastic just make it uh, a really shiny special pot and Isabella what have you decided for your I'm gonna do Makadama glaze which is uh, tan okay the tan color. yeah and uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to leave this with just an oxide or whether I'm going to glaze the feet. Yeah. So I'll see how it feels when I do it. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was going to put the iron oxide on the feet and the bottom of the pot and maybe the inside a bit and then just glaze the outer, outer part of it. Mm -hmm. So that will be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a, a cool process. Yeah, I'm and looking forward to it. Job do those pots because I have a creative idea for them. So okay. I'm excited to try it. <laughs> well, that's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Nice. You can blow it, like blow into it first. <laughs> oh, there we go. go. Okay. The gloves are on. <laughs> Hello. So I'll use a small sponge for this one, eh? Do you think? Or? Um, it actually, to to make sure it goes in, I think we need to apply it with the brush. Oh, okay. So I'm just looking for some okay. nice brushes. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That are a little bit bigger. Oh, that one is good. Now that's a good oxide brush because, like, the rough bristles will go right in. Okay. And then those, Get like, if you it. want to do that painting effect, those would be nice. Okay. Also, oh, that's so cool. cool. There you go. All right, here I go. All right, on goes the iron oxide. It's pretty strong. 
It's not too strong, do you think? It's cool. <laughs> I mean, we can water it I'll down. I'll probably water it. Uh, if you'd like, run. you can add a little bit of water here. So just like... So oh. I don't really follow a recipe. It's just a bunch yeah. of iron oxide with water. Can I take the sponge after and then yeah. rub it off to highlight the For edges sure. and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Wow, this is really cool. I think this is going to look amazing. Is it okay? Yeah, I think. Just wondering how far I should go around the rim here. Maybe just a little more. Yeah, if you'd like to have like a nice even uh, line, you can try to use those smooth brushes and put it on the bending wheel and just like, you can do a turn around. Oh, I see. If you'd like. I mean, your hand is pretty steady. <laughs> we're going to glaze over top of this, aren't we? Are we? Are yeah. we? I don't know. It's up to you. We were going to put that, the soft. The soft blue, soft yeah. Blue. So if you want, like how far do you want the soft blue to go in? It's going to go inside. Let's say around the rim and down to. Oh, okay. Nice, yeah. So just sort of like mm -hmm. dipping it in, you think that will, okay. Will it react with this? It will. Yeah. I don't know how. <laughs> right. It will react somehow. Okay. <laughs> because the, Good soft, or bad, the soft blue glaze does not have any red iron oxide in it. Right. So I'm not sure how so, it's going to react. Right. So it may be good or it may not be so good. So far, every everything with soft blue reacts in a, in a cool way, so okay. right. I think it might be interesting. This looks nice. That looks nice, doesn't it? Oh, you're blending it in. That's awesome. That's really nice. Very nice. <laughs> Here's a look at my pot with the iron oxide on it. So you can see I've kind of rubbed it away on the feet. So you can see kind of the, brings out the pattern, faded it on the edges, and it's got iron oxide in the inside, and then on the bottom I've kind of faded it away. Just to bring out the shape of it all. I'm applying the iron oxide to my pinch pot now. I'm just going to do the inside and the bottom feet and then it'll get the, the glaze on the outside. something there. <laughs> I think that'll do. There's the iron oxide on the bottom and on the inside. So we'll see how that turns out. Well, I think it should still apply, but it might look different. Is that the wax you're putting on now? Yeah, I'm putting wax. Okay, here, I'm going to try putting the iron oxide on the pot now. See if it... Oh, well. Oh, it goes on. It's not soaking in, but it's, it, it's going on. on. That might take a little longer to dry. Yeah. It'll be interesting, I think. Oh, cool. Looks more like a watercolor. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> What is that you're putting on? That's a, a wax. Okay, so that so the glaze won't stick, won't to, stick this to this area. area. Wow, yeah. that's gonna look really neat. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. The preparation is uh, quite intense. Like for before we even glaze, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do so many things. Yes. Quite neat red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Different. Wow. Oh, I'm excited. Oh my goodness. This is going to be quite You're something. like a risk 
Nigel. Yes, I do, don't I? <laughs> I've got the big pot drying over here, so it's got the iron oxide on it. And then once that dries, I'm going to try rubbing it a bit to get a bit of variation. Not sure how it'll work or how it'll fire, but uh, this is experimental day today. And Isabella has a nice striped, she's put wax on it to put stripes on this pot. It's gonna look awesome. There's the bottom of her pot there. Yeah, here's, yeah, so that's... So I put the wax over the iron oxide, so when I put the glaze, it's not going to glaze that part. That's going to look really nice. We'll see. Beautiful. Look at that, eh? Wow. Kind of like the other side. In case I like that one more. Yep. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. I'm putting the wax on the bottom and the inside, and the glaze won't stick to that then, so I'll just be glazing the cylindrical part of the pot on the outside. So here I go. Hopefully this won't turn the wax red. Oh, it might. Does it? Maybe I'll put, well, let's put a little bit in a separate okay. container. Good idea. Now I've got to do the outside of the feet, getting it in all the pattern here. And I'll go up the rim of the pot a little, the uh, cylindrical part. So the wax dries clear, which is interesting. But it's white when you put it on so you can see where you've covered. Okay. So that's got the bottom side all waxed up. So now I've got to do the inside of the inside of the pot. So there I go. How's it going, Nigel? I probably didn't need to glaze the inside, did I? Or? Well, it's actually good, good that you did. Yeah, because uh, that way very, we don't have to worry about the glaze. It's very thin on the inside. But yeah, no, that's good. That'd be that's okay. Good. Oh, would you like, if you want more wax, you can just pour it more if you run out. Are, are we dipping this or are we just painting it on? Uh, I think we'll paint it on. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. need to paint it. So you don't need to. Okay. That should be enough. Just go around the outside edge, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you want the bottom? You're going to be painting it too, right? So. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's here. I won't get any glaze on there. Yeah, you're just gonna not gonna paint okay. it on. I don't know where to set that. <laughs> Can you set it upside down? Like that? Yeah. 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 That's the easy way to do it, isn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> yeah. using the bending wheel. It's actually cool when it's like a little bit imperfect. These wheels would be good for working on both sides of those turntables. Yes. <laughs> I take them upstairs when I trim. Yeah, that's a good thing. So I'm not sure what tree will go into this one yet. Some lucky be... tree. <laughs> Maybe a maple or uh, my yeah, that uh, would look nice. Russian olive. Yeah. Yeah, and then I have that red one. The red red clay is nice. I like it. All right, let's see if it works. Let's see what happens. Seems to be working okay. Oh, oh yeah, it comes off. It comes off. Makes a nice. Does it come, um, come off like completely, or no? Actually, uh, sort of streaky. It's it'll be quite nice, I think. That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. Awesome. <laughs> Some variation. I don't know what it'll look like. That's that's really interesting. 
On my round pot here, I'm going with a soft blue glaze. I think it'll look really nice. I hope. Here I go with the glaze. So I've got a, Just you want to put a, a fairly bit. thick coat or? Yeah, we're going to put a few coats. Oh, okay. So this will be your first okay, one. Here I go. That was terrible. Very cool. in that one spot there, oh. but that's okay. It's actually going to be interesting. <laughs> it's probably going to react horribly with the iron oxide and do something mm. totally unexpected. I doubt it. But I'll be happy with whatever it turns out like. This is a really reliable glaze. Mm-hmm. Like a good base so glaze. So do I put, keep putting more coats on or? Yeah, once it dries. Okay, is it dry like is it dry? Can you see? Like if it's nice and chalky, it's getting then there. we can put another layer. Okay. Shouldn't have took the brush in that far. Actually that's good because like you want to get to that bottom uh, oh, okay. of those chemicals that settle. So I kind of like re stir it for you. What tends to happen is like, see on the surface, it's just water. Yeah. And, and all the sense. like flexes and sand go to the bottom. Making a mess of your wheel now. No, all all I do is make a mess every time. <laughs> Pottery is messy. <laughs> yeah. It certainly is, isn't it? When it's out, you see like it's more, oh. just like the way when it breaks, it's more brownish. So that's what we're hoping to kind of achieve with the glaze. That'll be very interesting. Mm -hmm. On the red clay. Yeah. And with your iron oxide it will be cool. also that'll happen. It's a nice contrast. Oh yeah, like that's without the texture actually. I see, so, yeah. Because yeah. you don't have a texture here, so it'll be more like that. Oh, that's cool. That's be Beautiful. And it doesn't settle on the bottom as much. Oh, okay. It's like some glazes are just like rock on the it's bottom. And this one hasn't been used in probably since uh, my winter firing. So it'll be oh. almost six months. Wow. But look how nice it still yeah. steers. All right, here I go with the green glaze. Sucks up the water, doesn't it? Yeah. That's too light there. I'll do the. How do you like that? Pink's going on nicely. Very good, yeah. I can put one more when it dries. Okay. All right, I guess that is that. That's good. it. Yeah, that's good. That'll be all right. We can wipe it what off. What should I do with that one in there? We'll wipe it off. Okay. With the sponge. It doesn't here. matter if I've kind of got a bit blotchy there, like. Yeah, you can try to also like. Just wipe smooth it, it out a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, oh. I meant like uh, from oh, here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, don't go over this. Uh, okay. Just just those areas that you waxed. Okay. If you have drips, you can remove them now. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the floating blue glaze that'll go on top and create those beautiful patterns. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that's going to be blue, but... It's that magical glaze that every potter knows and loves. Really? <laughs> 
So whoever watches this, I'm sure they know Floating Lucas. Like it's uh, it's one of the most popular glazes in I North see. America. Really? Wherever it's thicker, you're gonna have oh, more see. of that white shining through. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so see, this is the green, just green. I see. But wherever there is floating blue, there is a reaction happening. So. Okay. Well, I think I'll try fading it from green to blue. Oh that yeah, that would be cool. Maybe feather it or something like that if I can. You could try that for sure. Would you like to use that fan brush? Okay. Okay, Isabella, here I go. Floating blue. Alright. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Soaks it up. It sure does. Oh, there's a run. That's okay. Yeah. Another run. You, uh, if you want to, you can hold it upside down so the runs will go the other way. Ah, I see, yeah. That's probably, well, I've already started it with runs, so I'm gonna... I, I find the technique if I go paint down, mm -hmm. it's better. I go like this, and... Maybe something oh, like that, nice. you think? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, those runs, like, a lot of people love them. If they want, that's why they get the pot. Okay. <sighs> I would do like a few layers of that blue. Okay. So just so it make sure that we have a make nice sure blue. It pops at the top, mm -hmm. eh? Okay. Because it will break over the top and it will flow down. I see. So the top, like the very lip is gonna actually be darker. Okay. Kind of like this contour. It's very runny, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Paint my hand. <laughs> A good thing you still have gloves, Nigel. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. That is my <laughs> nice <laughs> <Remember> pie. <laughs> so much creativity today. Oh. So there it is, there's the pot before firing, which it doesn't look very... Uh, <laughs> it looks like something you, uh, I don't know, found in your grandma's attic. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows what it'll look like after. It's got the red oxide everywhere. And, oh my goodness, I can't imagine what it'll look like. So, yeah, it's difficult to imagine. It is, mm -hmm. it's, I, I just... So I, like, I actually don't want an even application. That's why I can do yeah. this pouring. I can see where the wax kept the uh, glaze from going into the other color. Yeah, it's the wax oh, resist. It's really something. That will be quite the experiment for sure. So let it dry a bit. What color is that as well? It's called pot puri. So it's pot like pot. a. It's this one. Okay. Actually, I don't know how it looks like on black clay, so yeah. it's going to be a surprise. Like I said, I'm feeling like I can take risks today, Nigel, <laughs> with you taking big leaps of fate with your big pot. <laughs> well, like, we'll okay. see how that turns out, won't we? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> if you don't risk, then you don't get exactly. interesting results. So, so because, um, you know, and I'm experimenting better to do it on one. <laughs> yes. Put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Sometimes those experiments are disastrous and sometimes they're like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. 
Okay. So this one will just do like okay. a half a dip or a lot of a dip and then wait for it to dry a little bit. See how it got into the feet. I think it's good. Yeah. to touch it until it's fully dry. Mm -hmm. and the wax on the very bottom of the feet is holding the It's steadying away, yeah. Amazing. 